Hi everybody, hey, thanks so much for tuning into my video blog. Listen, uh, you know what, I just got done filming uh, some new spots for a new product that I've got coming out, and I thought while I'm here, I might as well answer one of the questions that I had on Facebook. I've been loaded up with questions, by the way, about marketing and speaking and everything else. Um, be patient, I will get to all of them individually, but I thought I'll at least get one of them done here while I'm in the studio, so at least we have some professional, well, I should be standing a little bit more professional. But uh, anyway, nonetheless, here we go. So uh, the question I have is from a guy named Cavett, and he says, what kind of contests have you run uh, on the stage and which have worked the best? Now, with, with regard to contests, I'm assuming, based on that question, that the contests that you're talking about are things to get people to buy product and stuff, so I'm not really sure. But generally speaking, any type of a contest which has a hidden purpose or benefit to it usually is going to be best if you're doing something from an educational standpoint. So in other words, the contest itself um, has a obvious objective that gets people to involve and play and get them up out of their seats and that kind of stuff. But ultimately, if the, if the contest has um, a hidden agenda, not in a sneaky way to get them to buy product or anything like that, but I'm talking about a lesson that's higher above than anything. Like I'll give you an example. One of the contests that we run uh, from a program that I do with Roger Hamm Hamilton with Wealth Dynamics is we have people do a pitch for their cause. We want to make sure that it's a worthy cause and whatnot. And we tell them that the contest is about winning something. We don't tell them what it is, but we know they're going to win something cool. And the whole idea of the exercise is what happens is we break up into groups of like five or six and they all pitch it and then they vote on which one was the best one and then two groups of five get together and then those two people pitch and then those ten uh, vote on that one and then those ten get together with another ten. And what happens is out of a big audience we get like four or five people up on stage, we have them pitch their program uh, to the entire audience and then the audience votes on which one they feel is the most worthy. Uh, whatever worthy would mean, right? And then eventually we get up to one winner. Now what happens is when I get them up on stage, then I say, okay, now why are these people here and you aren't? Now they all thought it was to win something, but what they actually do is they get a lesson. And the lesson is that there are four traits that all of the people who make it to the finalists, they all possess these four powerful traits that make it believable to where people actually want to invest into their program, invest into their company. And what happens is it's a really, it's like it's a pretty cool lesson for them because they're all sitting in the audience and I make this one statement, I go, you know, the reality is why are they here and you're not? They're here because they have something you don't have and you might want to get that and it, man, people listen up to that. So that's like a mid-program kind of a thing. If you're talking about in that question, um, what kind of contest do you do to get people to buy product? This is a tricky one, you know, and I got to tell you, I have a different philosophy than most speakers do with regard to this, by the way. And the reason for that is because I think there is far too much manipulation going on in the professional speaking industry now. Uh, it is fraught with fake discounts, bullshit discounts, and all this kind of stuff that pressure people into making a decision when, you know, maybe their primary spouse is primary spouse, like they have a secondary spouse, um, like when their spouse isn't there to be able to make a powerful decision for them or something or with them, and then they're pressured into it. I think there's just too much of that going on in the business. That's not my style. I always joke around. And I say, listen, I'm never going to sell more than some of those speakers on stage do, but I sleep better than any of them because I know that when people come to my programs, they come for the right reasons, not because I pressured them or guilted them into it. Having said that, though, the reality is human beings need some level of urgency. The best thing that I've ever done to get people to come to the front of the room and buy a program and have that urgency but make sure that they're not just doing it because they feel pressured or guilted to do it. Um, one of the contests that I love to do because I do a lot of my stuff internationally and that I do my main events over here in the States, one of the biggest obstacles or objections we get is, oh, I don't want to pay for the airfare. So what I used to do um, when I would have those big events, I would have five airplane tickets. Now we had them mocked up. They were like basically vouchers for plane tickets. So I had five airplane tickets up in my hand. I said, here's what I'm gonna do. I've got five airplane tickets right now. These are vouchers for a round trip ticket to America. And the first five people who decide to buy this program, you're going to get one of these tickets. And it's for only the first five. Now, having said that, by the way, if you do a contest like that, you have to make sure that it's not a bullshit contest as well. So we would max it out at five. And here's the weird part. Um, uh, we did that. And then the sixth and the seventh and eighth person would come up. And we were really nervous that they'd just turn around and walk away. But you know what? We never had anybody walk away. Now, if somebody would have walked away because they didn't get the free ticket, my kind of thinking is, who the hell cares? They're probably a big whiner, and they probably want to do things their way anyway. Probably wouldn't be the best, best customer anyway. So I think incentives where you have contests like that, where maybe the first couple of people get a reward that the other people don't, I think that works pretty well. But I, I, I can't stress that it can't be a bullshit contest where everybody gets it. You know, I saw this uh, financial planner guy 
um, for investments and day trading. Uh, he was giving away, I think what it was, he was giving away a free notebook computer to the first 15 people that ran to the back of the room because he went to home uh, office depot and bought all these computers. They only had 15, so it's only the first 15. And then after the 15 sold, he says, listen, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it to everybody who goes back there now. We're going to send you a notebook computer. He knew he was going to do that anyway, and he just created the buzz. I'm not really a big fan of that kind of stuff, but it works. Uh, you know, so I guess your question, it, you know, your question didn't incorporate ethics in there. So I suppose any kind of contest which makes people feel that they might not get it if they don't take action would work. But um, that's that's a contest that I loved. It worked. Uh, the plane tickets, and you can do that with other things, by the way. You don't, you don't have to do plane tickets. You could do, listen, the first five people who sign up for my program get a one-hour personalized mentoring session or a one-day mentoring session. You can do all sorts of things like that, but just make sure it's not bullshit. Make sure that it's actually a real contest. You cap it off at the five or at the 10 or the 20 or whatever you want to do it to make sure you have some level of integrity and ethics. I know Seems kind of weird in this industry to actually have integrity and ethics. Bizarre concept that we have to talk about it. But let's just face it, in this business, it's running rampant right now with seminar scammers. So you got to look out for them. So, Kevin, I hope that helps with your question. I'm not too sure. Um, make sure when you ask the questions, guys, make them real specific for me so I know all the context and the details. But I kind of tried to hit both sides on there. Hope you enjoyed it. Please take care. Until next time, dare to dream and make each day an epic adventure. Bye for now. By the way, um, I forgot to mention this in the video, but you, uh, if you're watching this video on anything other than my blog, you might want to check out my blog. Go to tofermorrison.com, scroll to the bottom, there's the blog. Lots of great information, lots of free information, and you probably should subscribe too. Because when you subscribe to the blog, then when I post something on the blog, you get a notification that there's something new on the blog. Just thought I'd mention it. tofermorrison.com, check it out.